Oh. Well, good morning everybody. Welcome back to Sailing Madness. It's very early in the morning. It's just gone six o'clock, I believe. It's um yeah, it's ten past six. Oh dear me. It's uh Monday the third of April twenty twenty three and the reason why I'm up early this morning is because today we're leaving Port de Norwick for the last time as a berth holder. Um, moving over to a new marina, going over to Conway Marina, where I've got a berth for the next 12 months. So looking forward to that, but sad to be leaving here at the same time. Uh, Justin, my brother-in-law, is here on the boat with me. Uh, we both stayed over last night, so uh, he's helping me move the boat over today. So we've got an early start. The bridge is up and the locks will be open for us at uh, 7.30 so uh, we've got about around 20 minutes to get the boat ready to leave but an exciting day, nervous day uh, and also a sad day really, sad to be leaving here but uh, looking forward to where we're going. So as always once the alarm's gone off and before we do any boat work, before we do anything about moving this boat, let's put that kettle on and have a nice cup of tea. Yeah. Right. We've had our cup of tea, we've had our breakfast, we've done our checks. I think we're pretty much ready to go. I think we're ready to go. We're ready to go. The engine's on, there's no beeping, there's no funny noises. Just waiting for the, uh, for the bridge to go up. And we'll be on our way, leaving Port de as a berth holder for the last time. I'm a bit sad about this actually. Are you? Yeah, yeah. Well, new horizons. Yeah. Somewhere new to look forward to. Yeah. I'm going to miss the cafe. And the restaurant that we went to last That night restaurant was lovely. was lovely, wasn't it? If you ever we hear, should come back there. Yeah, if you ever hear, I can't remember what the place was called, but it's a pub stroke Cantonese, no, um, Thai, Thai restaurant. And uh, the curry in there is lovely. Beautiful. Yeah, red highly curry. Recommended, highly recommended. Right, so we should be on our way in a couple of minutes' time, and then, of course, the uh, the next stress is getting through the swellies. Now, I, I've never done this before in this boat. I've done it a couple of times. You've never done it. I've never done it. I don't know what I'm getting myself <laughs> into. We have here. <laughs> The plan I've written down on their detailed instructions. So, what could possibly go wrong? Keep watching, you're about to find out. Yeah. Go on then. Like you said last night, we were both working last night. <laughs> okay, so we made it into the lock. Gotta wait for these doors to close, these ones behind us. And those doors up there, those gates up there to open. Justin's holding us onto the uh, onto the side of the lock. Well, that's it, we're out. We've just left Port de Norwich for the last time as a berth holder, on our way to Conwy, via the Swellies. It's a lovely day. Cold, but beautiful, sunny day. So the plan is now we're gonna get up to the uh, Britannia Bridge and then we'll see how, how it's flowing through the bridge. We might have to hold off up there for, a, for 20 minutes, half an hour, before we make our passage through the Swellies. So far, so good. Right, sunglasses are out, and the Britannia Bridge is just coming into view. That marks the start of the Swellies. You can probably see it ahead of us. Dave, all the teacups away. <laughs> What's that? Do all it? the teacups away. Yeah, and my dad's not on the boat today. Now, if you watched an episode a couple of weeks ago, when I took the whole family out for a sail up here on the Menai Strait, uh, my dad got wet underpants. <laughs> That's because, um, well, you you were helming, weren't you? Justin was helming. Uh, we we turned round and we caught the uh, 
the, the force of the water coming through the swellies just before we got to Bredania Bridge and we had some nice tea on the deck here in the cockpit and uh, the cups went flying all over me granddad, all over me dad. Okay, we're getting closer now for the start of our passage through the swellies. Right, so can you see there's a triangle yeah. ahead of you? Yeah. Yeah, so once we're through the centre of the span, yeah. you head from midpoint between that triangle yeah. and the point that you can see before yeah. the river goes round. So you can see where that boat is. Yeah. So we're we're heading with the boat on our right. Yeah, so you're heading for the middle span first of all. It looks like it's going to go yeah, bang, yeah. doesn't it? But look, there's actually right. loads of room. Heading towards the point. Now, yeah, so you head towards that boat, but you're going to pass him. Yeah. You want to stay over this side as much as you can, because that's where the rocks are. Can you see where it's all rough? Yeah. Where it's, it's a little bit... The water is a little bit confused over there. Is that boat moving? Yeah, he is. He's coming towards us. Like this. Right, yeah, we're okay, yeah. So we're going to pass the wrong side of each other here, but it doesn't huh? matter. We're going to pass the wrong side of each other. But when you get past him, go over closer to the shore. Seven metres of water. Yeah, that's fine. Right, so can you see behind you now? See those two towers? Yeah. So you need to line them up. Keep going towards the shore. Yeah. And we're going to line. I'll, I'll tell you when they're lined up. And then what am I doing once they are? Then you just keep going straight. Right. Okay. Straighten up now. That's it. So if you look behind you, you need to come over this way a little bit now. Yeah. So this is what you're avoiding, all this here. Can you see where the water's yeah. bubbling up over the over the narrow rocks? So when the pyramid is a beam, which it was it was, yeah. then you should be on the transit, the two leading lights. Once on the transit, keep the leading markers so can you see you're coming a little bit too close to the shore now. Look behind, come out this way. Come, come out. Yeah. Once the transit, once on the transit, keep the leading marks in line until Price's Boyd Beacon is just ahead of the beam, and then auto course to starboard. So you need to come over this way quite a bit. Keep going, keep going, keep going. So that's Price's point there. Yeah. Keep coming out. Right, so that's that. That's the cardinal marker. That's Swelly Rock. So now I start turning to starboard over that way. Yeah. And yeah, so you, this is Swelly Rock here. It's it's obviously covered by the tide at the moment. So we want to pass 20 to 30 metres past that. Yeah. After passing the cardinal marker, keep close to the shore to clear the tail end of Swelly Rock. How, how are we doing for depth? 6.1, 5 .7, 6.7, 8.7.
So once past the point of Swelly Rock, alter course that you're heading just south of the Anglesey Pillar. So the end of Swelly Rock will be over here somewhere. And then you're heading for a point just south of the pillar because over here is a thing called the platters. Yeah. That's it. Am I on your way? You alright? Come over to come to port a little bit. Are we okay for depth? Because this is the platters here. 14, 15, whoa, that moves. Yeah. You see the water's all a bit confused over the... Uh, you won't. Over, so this is all the platters here. Platters, the, what, is, what, what is that? It's, it's just a name they've given. It's like um, some rocks that are down over there somewhere. Yeah, 15. But if you come through at low water, you can see them all, you see. Yeah. things that ignorance is absolute bliss yeah and as soon as you you start mentioning dangers you can't see it becomes quite stressful yeah right so when we can right so head for the center of the bridge now right so that was the first time I've done that in my boat and I've been stressing about this for a long time you and now tell I've me that. <laughs> <laughs> and now I've done it, I don't know what the bloody hassle was. Why was I stressing so much? It's actually quite easy. And I think the problem is, if you read the pilot books, you'll never ever leave a marina. But that was a lot easier and less stressful than I thought it was going to be. I'll do that any day now, that was good. you just got to plan it. You need to plan it so that you come through at slack water, which is two and a half hours before high water or low water at Liverpool. Um, and it's dead calm through here. Um, it'll be a different story if we came through an hour later or an hour earlier, but it's just, it's like a pond in here at the moment, it's great. And now we're just gonna head to up towards Bumaris and then out into the Irish Sea. Then we're gonna steer around to starboard, up the Conway River, I think it is, and then into the marina. Happy days, and it's a lovely day for it as well. Check out the old suspension bridge. What's that ferry wheel? Where? On the horizon. Oh, I don't know. Where are we going now? Yeah, just, just keep in the middle of the channel now. We should just have clear water now. Is that it? Yep. Oh. That was it. How do you feel about transiting the swellies? Well, the no. <laughs> <laughs> you obviously had to stick, stick to a course, but you know, it was, it was fine, wasn't it? Let me put this away. Was it Thomas Telford that built this bridge? I can't remember. What a beautiful day to move your boat from one marina to another. It's a little bit chilly, but I don't mind the cold. It's just absolutely, there's no wind, so we're not going to bother trying to sail. We're just going to motor all the way. But it's just absolutely stunning, perfect conditions. Well, not perfect conditions for sailing, but perfect conditions to transit the Menai Strait for the first time, or the Swellies for the first time. Right, do you want a, a useless fact? Okay, can you see that building there? That block of flats. Apparently, Roger Moore used to own the penthouse at the top. Did you know that? I didn't know that. It doesn't look very really nice at the moment because it's all covered in scaffolding, but 
Um, yeah, when he was alive, I don't know how often he visited, but Roger Moore owned the penthouse in that block of flats. Oh, and then that over there, that castle, that's where they filmed an episode of Cold Feet where they, was it a party or was it a wedding or something? A wedding. They went to a wedding, didn't they? They filmed all that in there. Chateau Riffel, Riffel, something Chateau, isn't it? It's good. Got a bit cold, so I'll put another layer on. Right, so it's uh, nearly 10 o'clock. We've been going, what, two and a half hours now? Yep. And we are just about to go around Puffin Island on our starboard side over there. Now, there is a shortcut that you can do because we're going over there, but the chart says to come this way. Now, if you're familiar with these waters, please put your comments in the box below about how you can, I'm sure, take a cut through so we don't have to go around the island because what we're doing is we're going around the island and we're going over there but you can, instead of coming around the island you can, I believe, just go straight that way but Navionics and the charts are sending us this way so we're going to be playing it safe for today I'm sure there is a way through, the water looks deep enough but you never can tell You enjoying yourself Justin? Yeah, pretty good being in the office. <laughs> Too right it does. So there's Anglesey there, stretching off into the distance. I'm not sure the camera's picking it up but there's a couple of big ships out there, one with a red hull, lots of seabirds around. There's Puffin Island. That's only puffins. And there's Snowdonia right there on the horizon. All right, everything's going well. Happy days. Another one. <laughs> yeah. The bow needed a clean. <laughs> Up over onto the deck. A little bit. It, it mainly is the bow underneath the underneath the guardrails. It's like Piccadilly Circus out here. Okay, so it's 20 past 11. We've been going for what nearly three hours now, and we're not far off Conway Marina. We're into the approaches now. We're into the Boy Channel. And the weather is still absolutely lovely. The wind's been a bit chilly, isn't it, Justin? It's been a bit nippy. But we're not far off now. Take a look at that. I'm not sure the camera will pick it up. You can see cars on the A55 over there on the land. And in there somewhere, and in there somewhere is Conway. Well, we're only about a mile away from the marina now. I can just see all the masts of the boats inside the marina. Just called them up on the radio, just confirmed that uh, our berth is available, the one that I've paid for for the year. And uh, yeah, we've got the green light to go in. So our journey has nearly ended. What a lovely day it's been out sailing. Have you enjoyed it? It's been great, really good. 
Yeah, okay. look forward to next time. Oh yes. And of course now we're here, there's going to be lots of next times, which is great. Just spin you around so you can see where we're going. Right, okay, so now we are here. Let me just show you where we've been. Uh, I should have done this at the start of the video before we left Port de Norwich, but um, I completely forgot and we ran out of time. So here we are, here's the UK. So if I just zoom in, we are in this part of North Wales here. So this is where we started. This is Wales, this is the island of Anglesey. So the Port of Holyhead is over here. And just to confirm your geography, we've got Liverpool here. Right, so we started off in Port de Norwich. That has been the boat's home since I've owned her. So we came out of the dock and then we entered what we call the Menai Straits here. And then we went straight up the Menai Straits. You can see this yellow line, this is the track of where we've been. And then this section here is what they call the Swellies. So this is between the Britannia Bridge and the Suspension Bridge here. So this is the tricky area. There's obviously lots of rocks and everything you have to avoid. And that's where we were being particularly careful at the uh, at the start of the journey a couple of hours ago. These are all the rocks, this is Swelly Rock and then there's the platters here. So we came this way, as you can see, looking at the yellow line we avoided all the obstacles using the uh, the pilot guide that I was reading out. And then after that it was pretty much plain sailing. Uh, we came up the rest of the Menai Straits here. Um, we got to about here where we thought we were in Balmaris where we were pointing out some of the buildings but obviously that was completely wrong. Bomaris is just there. So once we passed Bomaris, then we were out round this little island here. Now this is called Puffin Island. Now we were having a discussion earlier on about whether or not uh, we could go through this little section here. I believe there is a way through. Uh, lots of people have told me that you don't need to follow the chart and go round this side of Puffin Island. Um, we could have gone through here, but because it was all a bit new to me, I've never done this area before we decided to keep it safe and just stay in the, the deeper section. Uh, and the reason why we could have cut the corner is because once we rounded Puffin Island, we were heading right over this way into um, the Cross Colwyn Bay and into the, um, the channel for the marina. So that would have taken probably half hour, maybe 40 minutes off the journey. Uh, the only bit we could have sailed was this bit along here, uh, but the wind was coming this way. So that was out of the question. I didn't really want to zigzag all the way in. So once we got into the channel here, it was just a case of following the, the markers and as you can see we did that um, coming all the way in keeping the red markers to the port side and then we arrived here at Conway Marina and to our berth, our new berth. So that was the journey. Um, it took, I think we left just after 7.30 and we got in um, I think around quarter to 12 so there are thereabouts a nice four hour journey. Uh, no sailing but it was great to be out on the water, great to be able to video some of this stuff and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Well you know what, now we're here, the, the novelty for me and something that I've not been used to since I've owned this boat is to walk from your boat and just step off. Oh yes, love it. So there you go, as you've seen we've made it to Conway Marina. Uh, lovely little day out on the boat. Didn't get any sailing done because the only bit where we could have sailed, once we'd rounded Puffin Island, um, we were beaten into the wind, so it was a bit pointless and I wanted to get her as quickly as I could. Uh, been here a couple of hours, uh, went to the marine office, checked in, did all that sort of stuff, and then we went to the pub here for a little bit of a well-earned lunch. And then after that, 
we jumped in the car, which one of the cars we left here last night, and then we drove back to Port Norwich to pick up my car. So I've just brought the car back, and so now I'm all settled. Uh, I'm staying on the boat tonight. Justin's gone home, uh, and the reason why I'm staying on the boat is because tomorrow I'm having some big upgrade work carried out on the boat. Now, I did mention this a couple of episodes ago, uh, but the work was delayed because the company that are doing the work for me are pretty snowed under. But they're starting the work tomorrow, and I'll explain about all of that in the next episode. But one thing I did say I'd explain a little bit later on in this episode was why I decided to move from Port to Norwick. A um, couple of reasons, mainly because this marina here at Conway is quite a lot closer to my home. So it is, apart from Liverpool, it's the closest marina that uh, I could keep a boat. So that was the main reason. The second reason was, as you've seen in a previous episode, um, getting up and down the ladder on the harbour wall at Port de Norwich is fine for someone like me. But as you may have seen in a previous episode, when my 80 plus year old parents come sailing with me, uh, they have to scale that ladder as well. And in the last but one episode, when I took my mum and dad sailing, my heart was in my mouth when uh, my mum and dad were scaling that ladder to get up and down onto the boat. So that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to be on a pontoon. And the best place for that is in a proper marina, which is what this is here. So there's a couple of reasons. Uh, the staff at Port de Norwich are absolutely superb. Everybody is really friendly. So I am actually very sad to leave. Uh, I'm going to be leaving behind uh, some friends that I've made who have got boats that are still there. And as I said, the Swellies Cafe is just superb. If you ever do go to Port de Norwich Marina, you've got to go and check out the Swellies Cafe. Right, well that just about does it for this episode. I did promise you some sailing and whilst technically we didn't do any sailing, you certainly got some boat action. So I hope you appreciate that. If you have enjoyed this video, remember hit that like, give me a thumb, please subscribe, any comments, put them in the box below. I do enjoy reading all of your comments. Until next time, from me and from my brother-in-law Justin, thank you for watching, take care, see you soon, bye-bye. Now we've plastered the plat. We've plast plast the platters. Plast the plast the we've we've plastered the platters. Now, if you're familiar with these waters, I'd love you to have one of those points. One of those peaks will be Snowdonia. Well, you can't call it that now, can you? No. Nope. You've got to call it by its Welsh name. name, which is what? Because I haven't got a clue. No. Oh, we'll come back to that. Yeah, yeah. Now you know one thing I've noticed since I've been here is just how dirty my hull is. My hull is? My hull is. My hull is. His. You know, one thing I've noticed since I've been here is just how dirty my hull is. Oh, good, I've done it again.